Hi everyone and welcome to another exciting Python episode. In this one we are going to learn how you can sort the data that you maintain in your projects. Now learning about sorting could be extremely useful because sometimes you want to change the ordering of your objects or any random data that you maintain. So that's why learning about sorting your data in any way that you'd like to could be a very powerful skill that you should be aware of. So let's get started. And by the way, if you will enjoy the content of this video, please make sure to like this video and as well as subscribing to my channel so we can really spread this video across more people. Let's dive into it. All right, so we will talk about list sorting first. And then as we keep going, we will see more interesting sorting methods for more complex data types. All right, so let me paste this code snippet in here. And as you can see, we have a list of numbers in a random order. And as you can see here, I commented out that I'd like to sort it ascending. And as you can see, first we print the original list. And then we apply a very special method that is called sort, which is as expected going to sort our integers. And then we'd like to print the nums variable again. Now, if we execute this program, then the results are like the following. So at first, we see the original list as it is. And in the second line, we can see that the list is actually being sorted ascending. So what that means, it means that the sort method is basically applying the sorting to that variable and that's it. It doesn't do anything beyond that. Now to prove you my point, then I am now going to try to assign this line in here to a variable. So if we minimize our terminal and go to here and say that this is going to be equal to like a random variable. So I will say a equals to, and then we can try to print this a. Now, if we execute this program, then you can see that we receive none as the second output. So what that means again, it means that this sort method does not really return anything, but it does take the action in the original variable and it overrides the ordering of the original list. Now to prove you that, if we were to say control B on the sort method and it will be F12 if you use Visual Studio Code. So as you can see here in the description, it says to us, sort the list in ascending order and return none. So that really proves that it only takes the action and really does not return anything. But in Python, we also have a built-in function and not a method that will allow us to sort the given data type as well. So if we were to now delete everything from here and paste in a new code snippet, and I'm going to bring this in. And as you can see, it is quite equivalent to the latest code snippet that we had, but only the difference is that line. So now we use a built-in function that is called sorted. And the sorted built-in function does not override the given variable in here, but besides, it tries to basically create a new variable in Python's memory. So what that means, it means that it tries to return a new list with the ascending order. So now if we were to execute our program again, then you can see that in the first line, the list was not affected and as well as in the second line. But if we were to go ahead and assign this expression to something like new underscore nums, and I will make that to be equal to that one. And now let's change this to being new nums and try to execute our program. Then you can see that now we have new nums in the ascending order. So what that means, you can really play around with both of the approach that are existing in the Python programming language for sorting data. You can basically apply the sort method if you want to override the existing data type, or you can use the sorted built-in function to basically have a new data type of your own. So after that, we understood that the sort method and the sort to the built-in function are behaving in a different way. They are actually having one thing in common and it is the fact that we can pass in the argument of reverse. Now reverse is going to be a boolean type of variable that by default is going to be set to false. But if we go ahead and set this to true, then it is going to basically sort our data in descending order. So to prove you that, if we were to go to sorted built-in function and Right after we pass in the argument of our data type, we will say reverse equals to true. Then now we should see the list in descending order. 
So if we were to run our program now, and let me actually change the comment in here, so it is descending. And now if we execute our program, then you can see right again that first we have the original list because we have just printed it. And right after it, we got the list in descending order. So it is actually important to remember that you can also go ahead and specify reverse equals to true to both of the method and the built-in functions. And then basically have the data type in descending order. All right, so now that after we understood some basic sorting methods, let's get to more complicated sorting stuff. So in that code snippet, I have a class that is named the player. Now classes basically allows you to modelize real life data. And as you can see, I try to basically describe a situation that I have four players that are having different attributes like first name, last name, age, and also gender. So in our case, we have instantiated this player class four times. So what that means, it means that now we have kind of four new objects that are describing some different players. And if we were to print this last line in here which is saying player.all and by the way this is an attribute that I came with by hard coding the all property so that's why we are going to see now all the player objects and if we were to basically print that then you can see that we receive player John player Alan and player Kristen and Rachel as well. So what that really means, it means that we have four players that we can play around and see how we can sort it by their name or even by age, but in descending order. So let's see how we can do all those kind of stuff. Now to prove you that those are real objects that we can really access to one of their each attributes, then I'm going to first delete this one and I'm going to try to say here, print player one dot name. So if we were to say player one dot name, then we can really see that we receive the first name of player one. And if we were to duplicate those lines three times and change this to being last name and this one being age and this one being gender, then we would really receive each of those attributes. Now, this actually comes from the way that I defined this class. So we can have a short look of how this class is looking like, but this is not just the main focus of this tutorial. If you want to comment out to see how I decided to design the class the way that it is, then let me know this in the comment section down below so I can really create some more additional tutorials in the world of object-oriented programming. So let me minimize this class back and basically go back and work with the existing data types that are now player objects. So now let's say that we'd like to sort the players by their first name. So what that means, it means that Alan should be first because its first name is actually starting with the letter of A. So let's see how we can do that. So first of first, we should go ahead and basically describe the methodology of the sorting that we want to apply. And since the sorting should be by a specific field, then now things are going to be a little bit more complicated. So that is why we have to come up with something that are called lambda functions. Now, lambda functions are basically like regular functions that allows you to create them in a more quicker way and basically creating them in just one line. And by the way, if you feel like you wanna watch another tutorial that is dedicated on lambda functions, then I have a video on my channel that you can definitely take a look from the suggested link. So for example, saying def square and receiving a parameter like num and returning num times num is equivalent to saying something like square equals to lambda. So let me change the variable name because it is going to confuse with that one. And this is going to be equivalent to saying something like lambda num and after the colon, we should specify what this function should return and we can say num times num. So you see this expression and this expression are quite equivalent. So those are lambda functions. And as you can see, sometimes lambda functions could allow you to just create functionalities on the way. And it is going to really help you to define functionalities in a faster approach. So let me 
delete that and go now with a new lambda function that we should write. So now let's try to create a function that will receive one parameter and then it will try to return the attribute of name for the received argument to that parameter. So what that means, it means that we can now say something like lambda name equals to lambda and I will receive, for example, a parameter name that is named obj, just to basically describe that it is going to be an object. And this lambda function should return obj.name, because we'd like to see the attribute of name. So, for example, if we were to go down and say something, print lambda name, and then we are going to call this function exactly like we do with regular functions like def and we are going to call it and then pass in as the piece of information in here the player one object like that now we could already guess that it is going to pull the attribute of name because this is what this lambda function does it basically receives the object parameter and then it tries to give you back the attribute of name so if we were to run this program now and the results down below are going to be really as expected because we see John. Now, this is actually a great start by trying to sort our player's objects by their name. Because the only thing that we need to do now is to specify that the sorting methodology is going to be by this lambda name lambda function. So, this is going to look like the following. So, let me delete that now and I'm going to say here something like the following so I will say new players list and I will make that to be equal to sorted and then first of first we should pass in the collection of data that we'd like to sort so for sure it is going to be player dot all and this is something that we already saw before so I'm going to now pass in one more piece of information and that is going to be called key. So key is actually going to describe again the methodology of sorting that you would like to apply. And if we were to now pass in the lambda name as a reference to that key, then we should receive all the player objects inside this new players list in the ascending order that we expect. And it is going to sort them by their first name thanks to this lambda function. So I'm going to say here lambda name. And then I will try to now access the new players list by basically printing it. And now if we run our program, then we can totally see the results perfect. So as you can see, the first is Alan and the second one is John and third Kristen and the fourth is Rachel. Now, just for your information, for sure it is going to sort it alphabetically, so the result is actually very good because we were able to reach our goal. Now, if we'd like to reverse that, then we could easily go here and edit the sorted built-in function by passing in reverse equals to true and it will basically allow us to see it in descending order. So if we were to run that, then you can see that now we see Rachel, Kristen, John and only right after it we see Alan. So as you can see, sometimes using the lambda functions could be extremely useful when you basically try to apply advanced sorting. So now let's try to do that with ages. So we know that we have the age attribute which could be seen in here. So we got 29, 34, 31, 23. Now say that we'd like to sort from the youngest player to the oldest player, then for sure we'd like to see Rachel first. So for example, now we could basically change the behavior of this lambda function to basically sort by the age attribute. So it is going to be as easy as changing this to age like that. And now it also makes sense to change the lambda function name. So let me rename that. And now I will try to, again, pass as the key the lambda age. So I will do that. And in the first example, I will remove the reverse equals to true. And now we can go ahead and execute our program again. Then you can see that we see Rachel first because she is 23 years old. And right after it, we see player John and he is 29 years old. And then we see Kristen, which is 31, and Alan, which is 34. 
4. So you could really understand how powerful the lambda functions are in that case. So you can really create them along the way and basically make them to be used in the sorted built-in function to basically having a nice sorting to your collections of data that you maintain in your project. Alright, so I really hope that you learned something new that you are going to use in your next Python projects. So let me know down below if this tutorial was useful for you and for sure if you have any additional feedback then it will be much appreciated. So if you enjoyed this video please make sure to subscribe to my channel and as well as liking this video and click the bell notification so you can be aware from my future uploads. I will see you in another tutorial.